Professor and Mrs. Peter, friends, and like all you colleagues. It is indeed a pleasure to be here today to talk to you and present to you a technology that was introduced from Asia to the world and tell you some of the impacts that it has made in our part of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, before I start, I would like to tell you what Asia is. This is Asia. It has the most, it is the most populated continent in the world. And it has the world's highest proportion of the poor. Poverty is growing. This is Asia that we have. We have very high, I'm sorry, we have the environment. We have desserts, not the one that you eat, but real dry desserts. The rainforests, some of the hotspots of biodiversity in the world. This is what Asia is. We have clean waters from the Himalayas coming down into India to end up where people defecate, wash and collect water for their drinking purposes from the same source. This is Asia. We have urban populations. We have the Himalayas right down to the polluted seashores. This is what we have. And problems of Asia. Populations are increasing. There's poverty, urbanization, and finally ending up with loss of environmental quality. Land that was once fertile and plants growing are now turned into open sphere. Sewers collecting sewage and garbage. Water, water flowing, people bathe, drink, do everything with that water. And then, why did this happen? We have habitats. Housing was here. <coughs> this was a natural forest. Today, it's a garbage town. And therefore, we have natural disasters. Why have we why are we having this? It is because us humans, we humans, have motivated ourselves to earn profit. It's money that concerns us. Here you see, what is your crop? Profit. Nothing else. You don't care about the environment. Expert, please. So, what do we end up with? Natural disasters. Earth is hitting back. Floods. Earthquakes and recently tsunami. This has come back. Earth and nature is hitting back. Can we save our environments of Asia? What can we do? Can we impose laws? Can we do it? Every country has got its environmental laws. Is it effective? I'm sorry to say no. Therefore, we have to go back into managing our lives, managing our ecosystems. We have to live with ecology. And this is where we call, look at this. We, this is a typical ecosystem. We have our natural resources. We have the agricultural systems, which produce our food. And all these are human activity to bring us the urban system where people, money, fuel, manufactured food, foods, everything, and energy flows, nutrients flow, everything flows in this system. And let us see how we can change this. Just bring one product, a diverse range into this system 
and then we use this. We do not do anything but introduce a technology using microorganisms <coughs> that govern or that help us develop a good environment into this part. Not here, not there. If you want to do it here, you are going to fail. We get it into the systems. And then we have success. Effective microorganisms was presented to the world through Asia. And I'm proud to be an Asian because it came up there. And you see this handsome gentleman. Can you read? <laughs> He's still young. <laughs> And you see the successful use in a diverse range of environments. Let me go back to my notes and I'll tell you where each of these are. This is greenhouse agriculture in Laos. Can you imagine? But Laos, my country, good tea with here. Great Sri Lankan tea with here. Thailand, intensive vegetable production. No chemicals, organic waste, and EA. Look at the papayas growing in Malaysia, Myanmar, and obviously Japan. Different environments, different climates, EM work. Waste management. This is a United Nations development program in Bangladesh, the country that has one of the worst environments, and this is an urban area of Dhaka, the capital, where they are using waste into money. Management EM, solid waste management. EM is sprayed on garbage. There are factories using garbage, factories using EM, spraying all over in different ecosystems of Asia where EM is used successfully for environment management. I can go on with lots of examples from a kitchen to large pellets. Wastewater, uh, wastewater systems, composting, and industrial factory waste, all using EM to control waste management to provide a better environment. Water management, we are talking about water. EM applied. In Vietnam, in Thailand, all the countries of Asia, they are using EM. Large scale, small scale, household. The whole objective is using microorganisms, EM, to build up, to promote, or to sustain nature. How does EM, how you might, how can you apply such an EM to water? As Professor Hika said, blended into solids, either directly as liquid or in the term as solids. People add it to water. The whole objective is to shift the balance of microorganisms in nature. Enhancing human health. These are hospitals that are actually using EM to have a better environment for their patients. Thereby, not only do they purify water, but the poor countries are using EM to reduce their cost maintenance. This is also very important in a world that is fast going, that, it, that are having serious problems of money. One of the recent work has been EM applied to increase biodiversity. This is a case study undertaken by the Royal Project in Thailand, where EM Bokashia, EM fermented material, is applied. They have increased the number of species of plants by 55%, and they have found <coughs> new species growing. Why? Seeds that have been dormant have been given a more conducive environment. Polluted water after rains are now flowing like this. This is not magic. We invite you to Saraburi in Thailand to show this program, which is under the King's Royal Project in Thailand. And this will be replicated in other parts. 
where here nothing else is applied to increase the biodiversity, to change the ecosystems to a better system. And the natural. Everyone talks. For example, Sri Lanka was known for either tea or now the tsunami. And in all these countries, it was used. I'm sorry, we could not get a greater picture because of the sensitive nature of the subject. But these are actual situations where EM was used. This is in Thailand. The Royal Army and the Royal Police did it. This again is in Thailand. This is in Sri Lanka. People using EM. And here in India, where our group are teaching the local people how to do, clean their own environments with EM. It was very, very successful. The order was removed within 24 hours. The biggest, this was the biggest concern. The smell, the decaying bodies, putrefaction, EM help to control the order. If it does not smell, 90% of the problem is taken care of. Why do we complain about garbage? Because it smells. If it doesn't, you're not too worried about it. And this is what EM does. Then, how does this happen? That's Professor Hika, my teacher told me. Three principal species for trophic bacteria that you find all over. Lactic acid bacteria, the yogurt. And the yeast, your bread. And these organisms work together. And let us see the mechanism, a simple mechanism. I don't want to go into science. The normal situation is you have microorganisms, you have the harmful microorganisms. And in this world today, even humans tend to go in the bad direction rather than the good direction. Is it not true? <laughs> right? You take on bad habits faster than good habits. This is nature. And then the beneficial microorganisms, your good habits get crumpled. You apply here. You're doing nothing else but shifting the balance to a beneficial situation. Microorganisms found in our ecosystem is not imposed upon you, it is brought and then just added. And therefore, the putrefaction process, the garbage, becomes <coughs> something really valuable, something that you can use. Like a, a person goes in culture good <coughs> habits and becomes a good person. How does this happen? I'm just going to take one example. The principal problem of this is order. You know it. Polytrophic bacteria is the key, one of the biggest. It oxidizes hydrogen sulfide, which provides the offensive smell. The sulfur is an important key of this map. And if we can control that, we have success. It has impact on the sulfur cycle. This is why I told you, in the earlier slides, we bring EM into a situation where the processes take place. Not at the beginning, not at the end, but where the process actually takes place. And therefore, in Asia, we started like a very active kid. From 11 nations to 28 nations. We started with 11% of the nations in Asia. And today, 70% are actively using EM. And the balance 30 are now talking to us. It has been significant. 15 years and we succeeded. Why have we been, why have we been successful? EM is made local. It's not brought from somewhere else. And this is a major factor in our favor, that it is made locally and there's no quarantine laws. We do not break them, they are made locally. It's safe, it's easily used at low cost. Is very effective and efficient. And MRO and in Asia, the Asia Pacific National Agriculture Network offers technical support virtually at no cost. 
Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the future is bright. But there are many questions of all ways. Although, the question, EM use is increasing. This is where the success is. Conventional scientists, I'm a conventional scientist, are asking, how does it happen? Why does it happen? But it works, and we show them it's working. And therefore, we in Asia have had much success despite problems. They have been setbacks. It's always the case. But we have been successful, and we are using EM very effectively. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we from Asia invite you to join hands. Let us work together. We will provide whatever help we can to help anyone who wants to make this place a better world for us and our future generation.